We're back again with 15 minute interviews. We have Portland here with us today. In a second, I'll let him in, uh, introduce himself. Um, I just want to let you guys know that um, I know as far as my interviews and stacking up today is a, is a heavy day of getting these interviews in, which is a good thing. I know these next couple of weeks, we're going to be pumping them out every Wednesday and Friday at 6.30. A big key to, um, to, to our success, and I guess really being able to help the most amount of people is um, everybody sharing, everybody being willing to share. Okay, so I have a different challenge today than what I've thrown out to everybody to share before. So I've been begging everybody pretty much to, to share these, share these. My challenge today um, and it's, it's a little bit based uh, a little bit based on what Corey and I were talking about before we jumped on this recording, which is um, therapists. Like I challenge you to get on and, and be interviewed. Um, and so I know that there's this notion that, you know, maybe we don't necessarily want to to get on and show ourselves, but I don't think that there's anything um, better than being able to see what it might be like or who you're going to be interacting with uh, in order for us to be able to, um, to open up to somebody else. And so I know if I'm a client going into a therapist, I would love to be able to know um, what, what it would feel like or, or what my therapist's um, personality is, is like. And so um, there was, we have that opportunity to be able to show that off and so now, um, instead of having that challenge to share. My challenge is um, therapist, if you'll share with me um, in 15 in, uh, minute interviews and, um, and, and just be free um, to answer questions and, and be able to, to get on our, our 15 minute interviews YouTube. All right, so um, that's enough of our plug for our 15 minute interviews. Portland, thanks for sitting through that. And if you can introduce yourself to us and tell us where you're at, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, so first, uh, thank you for having me. You know, these are these are great opportunities, as you said, for us as, as providers and therapists and clinical social workers to, to allow people to sort of see us and see our personalities, um, regardless of whether we try to just take a neutral stance or, or a background stance. You know, the people that we see come to know us a little bit and they want to know the real us. So this is another way that we can be real and be authentic. So, so I, I appreciate being here and I appreciate you setting these up. Um, so my name is Cortland McPherson. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. Um, I have a private practice in Alameda, California, right outside Oakland. Um, and I specialize in helping men in their 20s, 30s, and 40s uh, get unstuck in their work, their relationships, and sometimes just in their lives. Um, and, you know, I say I work with just men, but that's more about marketing. Um, you know, it's sort of niching down, but realistically, I work with anybody who needs support in those areas. Um, and I like the, the 20s, 30s, and 40s bracket because those are some key developmental periods of our lives. You know, in our 20s, we're sort of trying to figure it out a little bit. In our 30s, you know, we're, we're settling down in some ways and we're trying to figure stuff out then. And then if we don't sort of get through that period in our 40s, we sort of hit that again. So my goal is, is helping people sort of navigate that span of time so that they move through life a little differently. Um, and we just do that through a, a psychodynamic, psychotherapeutic process. And those are big words, but, you know, it's about being real together and sitting in the room and learning together. Okay. So, yeah, in, in, you're in California, too. And that's exactly yep, yep, yep. Uh, so one thing that you've definitely done by by um, adding on to our interviews is you've added a different kind of niche that that's come up and and you know helping um, men in twenties, thirties, and, and forties, um, but then just people in general. Like I did something that we've um, that we've you know, met earlier in, in our interviews, and so the idea of helping them to get unstuck in different um, areas of their life is, is something that could be helpful. Um, so what's some of the impactful points that you make and that you find yourself a, a theme in, in your therapy? Yeah, so the, the impactful point and the theme that comes up, you know, the language that I'm using and saying, you know, helping men in their 20s, 30s, and 40s get unstuck and become clear is that, you know, we all sort of come to a place at different points in our life where we're just not sure what's you know, what we're feeling, what's going on. We sometimes feel as though, you know, things are pretty good, and but something is missing. So my goal with folks is to help them sort out what brings them, you know, uh, meaning in their life. 
and whether it's uh, finding passion again, whether it's you know finding intimacy in their relationship again, whether it's uh, looking into themselves and trying to sort of align themselves with their their value system. You know, uh, when we talk about you know the work aspect, you know, a lot of people are in in career paths and jobs that they just don't like, and they're not sure how to get out of it, and it brings this sort of space of, of dysphoria, of unhappiness. And a lot of times that's because their, their job or their relationship, whatever it may be, is not in alignment with their value system. And, you know, I bring a lot of sort of mortality. It sounds morbid into the, into the space, but, you know, at the end of our lives, you know, we have to think about that a little bit. And we have to decide how do we want to live and what are the values that we want to live by. And by doing that and sort of looking at it and saying, you know, this is where I want to end up, we can shift the things in the now. The other part of that is, you know, people come in with, you know, diagnostic sort of criteria, right? They, they might be say, I have anxiety, I might be, have depression or, but a lot of those things are rooted in, you know, our misalignment in, in who we are. So, you know, my goal with folks is to help them understand who they are and to create a better sense of cohesion from their sort of value system uh, into, you know, sort of the life that they want to live and bring it together. And I work with men, right? So not that, I mean, I work with women and everybody else too, but you know, a lot of times I tell men, it's like, you know, if you're driving your car and your car is out of alignment, that means the steering wheel is crooked and your wheels are straight, but you're going to go off the road. So the goal is to bring it all back into alignment so that life feels different for you. Right. No, I, I like that idea that you say about um, diagnostic criteria like depression or anxiety. Uh, I read something the other day that was saying that you know our, our body kind of wears whatever our mind, wherever our mind, you know, the other mind's kind of at start. And, and so I, I think that's an important piece. Is there going to be something else that we have to change to realign? Um, yep. So, okay. Cool. Yeah, um, those are very thick points. I feel like that you know probably constantly help people um, as you're as you're working with them. All right, so with knowledge, what, what is your books or somebody that you follow or <laughs> any kind of podcast or movie that you've seen, documentary that you can share with sure. You know, there's a couple things that come to mind. So one one documentary that I think is important for men is I think it's on Netflix or you can find it on YouTube, but it's the mask you wear. You know, as men, I think we suffer in silence a lot of times. You know, there's this idea, this, this notion of what masculinity should be, and we're confined by that. So this documentary, The Mask You Wear, sort of tells us, you know, we can step outside of it. You know, I'm sure you've heard of the man box and all, you know, these sort of ideas around, you know, toxic masculinity, but we don't have to be confined by those things. And... I think by men taking a look at that, watching that, and understanding that we can we can be, you know, different. We can share our thoughts, our feelings, our dreams, our hopes, you know, our our, our fears, all these things. You know, it, it opens us up differently. So that's one documentary, the mask you wear. And then, you know, what started some of my journey uh, way back when, probably about 2014 or so, is I read the book, The Four Hour Work Week. Uh, by Tim Ferriss, and I'm an avid follower of Tim Ferriss. You know, he's a you know Silicon Valley you know tech startup guy from the you know early 2000s, you know like seven something like that. You know, he's no longer in California. I think he's in Austin, Texas now. But you know, he had a book, The Four Hour Work Week, and it changed how I thought about my life. You know, and what came about was he talks about lifestyle design and building a life that you know is again in alignment with the values that we want. And by shifting, you know, how we think about our lives and living more intentionally, um, our lives feel different. And, you know, from a therapeutic perspective, that means we have to let go of the expectations of, say, masculinity, of our family dynamics, you know, so that we can live more true to ourselves. And, you know, I think Tim Ferriss does a really good job at doing that. Um, so I like to listen to his podcast, The Tim Ferriss Show. You know, I think his books are, are really good at sort of dissecting, you know, how our lives can be. Okay. Good deal. Sorry, sort of uh, on the expectations of looking at yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, good deal. Any other recommended knowledge that you have? 
Oh, I mean, there's 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 so much, you know. I think for 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 people in general, but also for for men, you know, we've we've lost in some ways, in my clinical opinion and my my personal opinion, we've lost this sort of ability to to just be in life. You know, we are always constantly doing. Men are known for doing. We do things. We want to solve problems, but you know, in in the in the past, we learned to to just sort of be a little bit. So, you know, I recommend for men learning to meditate. Uh, so I like to use the Calm app. Um, you know, I think that that's a really great thing to sort of bring us back into our, our breathing. You know, there's a, a quote from the Karate Kid movie from the 80s where Mr. Miyagi says, you know, when life is out of balance, go back to the basic of life, which is breathing. And, you know, that's always stuck with me. And because, you know, when we breathe and we can slow things down, we can, we can exist differently. Um, and the other part of that is, you know, when we're trying to be, I think men have lost in some aspects their, their way, you know, so they need to get back to reading, get back to a path of thinking about being more of a, a renaissance man, you know, let's go back into tinkering and puttering around and, you know, reading classic novels and, and, you know, some of these things are outdated in some ways, but we can learn from them so that we can live life differently. Um, and the other piece of this is I always recommend, you know, I'm in California and, you know, there's so many beautiful parts of California that people can explore. And if men have a chance to go out and reconnect with nature, you know, camping, whatever it may be, you might not like it, but I think it can be really great to literally get grounded, you know, and put your feet in the dirt and, and start to see that, you know, life is a little bit bigger. And when we come outside of ourselves a little bit, it helps us then reconnect with ourselves. Right. I think that can be a really important thing. Okay. Right. So can you tell us a story or a challenge or homework that we can kind of take with us? Like you've given us so much already, but if you can add to that by one of those three things or all of them. Sure. So I'll sort of start with a story slash and then move it into a challenge, right? So. You know, I don't, I, I got into this, this psychotherapeutic journey, uh, you know, sort of by, by happenstance, you know, I worked in the real estate industry for uh, a time in my life, you know, and worked in business. And I always thought I wanted to like pursue my MBA and be a business person. And, you know, I just didn't love it. You know, it didn't speak to me. And I started my journey to get my master's degree in social work in 2009. And, you know, it spoke to me. I realized that I was better at helping people understand themselves while also learning from them to understand myself. But part of that also, even while doing that, you know, I realized that I still wasn't happy. So when I'm working with the people that I see, the men that I see, I practice what I preach. I practice meditation. Um, I, I practice following sort of living authentically. And that started because there was a tension that was building in my body. I was working in a community mental health clinic uh, back on the East Coast. And, you know, it, I wasn't in alignment with myself. I could feel it. And it got so bad that I was getting, you know, physically sick. Um, I was constantly having headaches, all these crazy things. And that's when I, I found the four hour work week book, right? And I started to redesign my life around the things that felt right and that I needed. You know, this is the idea of self-care and taking care of oneself. And by doing that, you know, I changed the direction of my life. And now, you know, I'm able to do a job that I love. I'm able to, uh, you know, spend time on my bike on Wednesdays. I, I have a work schedule that I build. Um, you know, the financial aspects are in, in place. And, you know, all these things come together when we decide to live more true to our, our values and sort of our authentic self. Mm -hmm. So my challenge to the people listening, to the men, the women, whoever, is to start to think about the life that you really want and what it will look like at the end. Again, it sounds morbid, right? It's sort of like thinking about what you want your obituary to say. Yeah. But by looking at the end result and saying, wow, I don't want to have any sort of fears or regrets or something at the end of this. You know, we begin to think about stuff and back it up. 
you know, I'm almost 40 years old and I know that my time, the oldest man in my family is 86, right? So that, that gives me, you know, 40 plus years to finish this out. So what am I going to do in that time? And I really challenge people to think about what are they going to do in the time that they have? And, you know, these are the ideas that come with meditation, um, that come with stoicism. You know, it, life is pretty short. So what are we going to do with it? Yeah, lovely. Man, um, I feel like we need to sit down and have another conversation. <laughs> Anytime. Yeah, you know what? And I think it would be a good thing for people to be able to see, you know, like, I think it'd be a good thing for people to be able to know, um, you know, about more about what it is that, that you're discussing right now. Mm -hmm. so, hey, I appreciate you sharing your story and then getting to that um, challenge piece of, of where we can be and know that it really exists, right? Because you've, mm -hmm. you've experienced it, right? And I would say the same thing that um, some of the, the, the pieces that it takes to, to live um, peacefully with a, a, a cool inner peace is all about aligning yourself. So, very yeah. helpful today. All right. So, this has been uh, 15 minute interviews. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Wednesday and Friday, 6 30, we're releasing a new one all the time. Um, I'm Thomas Isaac Castro, a licensed marriage and family therapist in California. Um, and thank you again for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.